Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the fourth Sunday of the month, which means it's time for the plant-based kitchenista with Chef Kelly Williamson. She's going to be making some Halloween favorites today. I'm so excited. Please welcome her back to the show. Hi, Kelly. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I wore a special uh, sweatshirt for you. Does this ring a bell? Yes. It's beautiful. Yeah, it took us favorite. hours. So Chef Kelly and I were in uh, Mexico together at the Rancho La Puerta, where if you haven't gone, please go. We have a group going next August. I think there's just a few spots left. And one day we kind of escaped and went to TJ, Tijuana. And boy, I mean, this is because I, I, I had lost my True North sweatshirt, which is purple. So I bought this. And of course, at the end of my stay, somebody found it. And now I have two purple sweatshirts. But anyway, just good times, good memories. And uh, yeah, it, it was so fun hanging out with you, man. I just hope we get to agree. And it was one of the best weeks I've had in a long, long time. So it was just, just, yeah. just magical. So now we go, we switch gears. We have fall. It's colder. It's cold. Is it getting colder by you too? Because you're in Colorado. It actually, this morning when I was looking at the, the thermometer and stuff, it said it was 36 degrees this morning. So we had some like a cold spell that came through. And then I guess it's, it's supposed to freeze tonight and then be a little bit cold tomorrow and then kind of warm back up and we'll see. You know, it's so funny. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm a person. I've always been cold. People say it's because you're so thin. I, I've, cold. I've always been cold, guys, my whole life. I tell, I'm tell i telling you the truth. And so I, I wear this thing. I forget what it's called, like a box. It's a thing you wear over your face, but you end up looking kind of like a bank robber, you know, because all, all you know, all you see is the eyes and the gloves. And, the, and, and, and my husband just, without me knowing, snapped a picture of me. And he says, you know, you look like a terrorist. I can't, you know, you can't walk around like this, but I don't know what to do. Oh, you know, I, I always think about um, one of the guests on the show, Dr. Melissa Sunderman, who says there's no such thing as bad weather, just inappropriate clothing. But man, it's just it's it's tough out there when, when you're a cold person. Yes. I if you walked around with that and probably in Colorado, you'd probably the, I, I have a feeling that there'd be a bunch of uh, policemen and stuff that would stop you. Isn't that yeah. funny? Well, he says, good thing you're with me, but I've got to find a way to keep warm because it's mostly it's mostly my like my hands and my face that get cold. My trunk doesn't get so cold, but it's it's the face and the hands for some reason. Anyway, I'm, I'm not built for cold. That's I, I thrived in the desert. I'll tell you, that's for sure. But I do like the one that it's a little bit cooler because then we can enjoy soups. Not that we can't enjoy them right. when it's warm, but there's something comforting about a warm bowl of soup on a cold day. I agree. Chilies, that type of thing. That's, you know, when it starts getting cold out, that's when you start thinking about those. Yeah, that's one of my favorite. I wouldn't say cold is one of my favorite times of the year, but being able to make all the warm foods and it's like the comforting foods and it kind of reminds you of home and all that. I love yeah. that. I and the only thing I don't like about the winter months is that it gets darker sooner. Five o'clock is yeah. just way too early for me in, me, in my opinion. But I've been making soup almost every day. I don't know if you saw the show with Chef Bravo when I got back from True North, but they make this soup, two ingredients, Yukon gold potatoes and zucchini. And I've been drinking it every day. It's so good. I have not tried the recipe, but I saw it and I was like, I am going to try that. That sounds good. And Jerry's like, same thing. He's like, he sends me the email and he's like, Hey, you need to make this. So, yeah, and you know, I, I figured it out in the instant pot. It took only five minutes and I, you know, I got the exact ratio of, of vegetables to potatoes to water and, and I don't put anything in it for people that need spice, spice it up or put a few scallions, but I've been just going crazy on that soup. I haven't gotten tired of it yet. That's nice. Two ingredients. Love it. Yep, Love you can't it. get simpler. You know, one day I didn't have zucchini. I made it with broccoli. It was good, but the, the zucchini was, it was just better the way the chef makes it, you know? Yeah, I could see that. Do you have foods that you just don't get tired of? Mashed potatoes. That's what I grew up on. That was always my comfort food. So anything that's mashed potatoes or anything potatoes, I mean, I'd love that. So it's, you know, I was just thinking about because I have fresh rosemary. So I was like, all right, well, I'm going to have leftover ro rosemary. So guess what's going to be this weekend is going to be rosemary roasted potatoes. So that's probably my favorite. Um, and I would say like a really good mac and cheese, but without, of course, all the cheese and stuff. So, you know, when you use like a butternut squash cheese or something, it's just that comforting. It's like what my mom used to make when we were kids. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Great. So tell me what your fall or Halloween menu is and what do you live in a, in a, a 55 and over community, don't you? We do. And so pretty much the Halloween is uh, people will put up lights, but you don't really see any kids. Um, except for maybe sometimes somebody will bring in the grandkids or something, but you really don't see people walking around. It's very quiet here. So, um, <clears throat> but what we're going to make is pumpkin pasta because we figured that, you know, that's the time that you'll actually get to see pumpkin. 
So I roasted up some pumpkin. You can see my my crazy looking pumpkin in the back where it's I cut it in half. So it kind of looks a little scary without all the stuff in it. And then we're going to do a Halloween salad and you'll understand why it's Halloween salad here in just a few minutes. And then we're going to do pumpkin muffins because I mean, what else can you do with pumpkin muffins is nothing but enjoy them. So we'll have extras. I made some earlier this week and, and gave them to one of our neighbors that was sick. So um, that was, they're kind of like a very popular right now, the pumpkin muffins. Nice. And so I'm guessing you don't get any trick-or-treaters. Not a, at all. I think we saw last year, I think we were looking outside and stuff and I think there was maybe two and they were pretty much going to two or three houses because it was their grandparents or something. But other than that, no. Nice. All. Yeah. Cool. Well, I can't wait to see you in action. Perfect. Well, we'll get started. So I figured what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, I'm going to get the spaghetti going and stuff for the pumpkin pasta, but then I'm also going to make the pumpkin muffins because they need to go in the oven. So I figured that's the first thing that we'll get going. So we've got for the pumpkin muffins, let me grab everything. And do you use canned pumpkin or, uh, you know, regular pumpkin? So we're going to use for the pumpkin muffins, we're actually going to use um, just the canned pumpkin. So it's just like the Libby's that's really good. You don't want the pumpkin pie mix. You just want the pumpkin. And so that's just what we're going to use for that. And one of the things too, that if you end up opening up one of your larger cans of, cause you can only get the larger cans sometimes in the stores, you can always freeze the other part of the pumpkin. So you can just put it in a baggie and mark what it is and then use it another time. So this was actually in the freezer. It gets a little bit um, thicker when it's in the freezer and stuff, but it still has the good pumpkin taste and just go ahead and use it. So we're gonna do, so the first thing we're gonna do is we've got the oven that's going, it's already preheated. And you can do this in like a like a, a KitchenAid mixer, but I'm just going to do it right in front of you versus having the mixer go. So you've got you've got a cup of the gluten free flour, or you can just use you know a whole wheat flour, whatever you want to do. I'm just using a whole wheat today. Then we've got two cups of oats, so rolled oats. Not don't do your minute oats. You want to do the rolled oats. Dump those in easy. Then you've got a cup of applesauce. So applesauce is gonna be your replacer for like your eggs and, and your oils and things like that. It also gives a little sweetness. Oops, as I drop it, slippery today. And I always get the unsweetened applesauce. So I don't get the ones like with cinnamon or anything like that in there. So the unsweetened, cause you don't need all that sweetener in there. Then oh, no. I've got- it's so pumpkin. funny, Kelly. Kelly, applesauce is so sweet. And I can't imagine putting more sugar in something that sweet. You do, but you can buy it and stuff that has all the sugar and like cinnamon and all kinds of like green apple and crazy things. I always just get the brand and stuff that has the unsweetened because I figure the apples are sweet enough as it is. You really don't need them. So the other thing you can do on the pumpkin muffins is you can either put cinnamon and if you've got like cinnamon and nutmeg, if you want to do it. Or you can use just a regular, like a pumpkin pie spice mixture. So I'm going to use the pumpkin pie spice mixture. So that's in here. So I've got um, basically a teaspoon of the pumpkin pie spice. And then I also have a teaspoon and a half of baking soda, because that's going to be the one that's going to help you to have you make sure that they rise. So that's all put together. Get that in there, get all that pumpkin pie spice. So that's in there now. You can also add nuts. So I'm going to just probably put the nuts on the top instead of putting them within the pumpkin. So I'll do that here in just a second. Then you've got your, your pumpkin puree. So I'm just going to add that in. Let me grab a spoon. You could, if you know, if you're, if you're done and it's after Halloween and you're wanting to make some pumpkin muffins and you want to use your pumpkins that were on the front porch because they're starting to get to the, to the age and stuff where they need to be used. You could also just do like what I did when, I, when I'll show you with the pumpkin um, pasta. You could actually bake up your pumpkin and use that too. So up to you, whatever you want and whatever makes it easy. So then you have a cup to, and it depends on, so it depends on your oats because sometimes your oats will soak up all the moisture. So a cup to usually sometimes maybe a cup and a quarter of hot water or um, apple juice. A lot of times I always just use the water because it's always available. And then I don't have apple juice that's that's sitting around. So, and I already have the applesauce in there. So I'm just going to add a little bit. Play with it a little bit here. Grab a spoon. So you can see you don't need the KitchenAid mixer. You can just do it just like this. And this recipe, if so if you take out the, the pumpkin puree and you put in the, the bananas or you put in peaches or you put your, you know, your blueberries and stuff, you just substitute in a different fruit and then you have completely different muffins. But 
pumpkin's the best. So it's kind of like a muffin, uh, what, what do they call it? Like a template. Uh-huh. Just kind of keep mixing it up. It smells so good because you have the pumpkin pie spice in there. Or if you've got like cinnamon and nutmeg, that works too. And then you have your pumpkin puree. So that smells good. So add a little bit more water. You want a consistency where it's not just like when you're putting it into a muffin tin that you're just plopping it in. It's almost like you're you're kind of like scooping it in and it's got it's got a little bit of of moisture to it because otherwise your muffins they come out a little bit chewy if they're too if you don't have enough moisture in them. So that's pretty good. Just add a little bit more. And I'll just pop that over there. So that was probably about a cup and a quarter. You can also, when you're making these, and I'll show you ones that we made a little bit earlier. Like I said, we had a sick neighbor that had a really bad cold. So I figured that he would like it. So um, you can make like a strudel, kind of like a streusel topple, topping on it, which that is real easy to make. But let me grab, I have a little dog we're babysitting <laughs> that's down right here. So does your little dog? I, I don't have the, the fancy muffin tin. I'm going to have to order it. The ones we used in in uh, Mexico. Oh yeah, the, I left them there for them. The silicone ones. Is your is does your doggy get along with your visiting dog? Yes, she does. You want to see what she looks like? She's very cute. Yes. This is Cleo. Say hi. Very cute. Oh, she's so cute. Your your baby. She's a Havanese. I love Havanese. So Havanese. this your your babysitting for a friend. Um. Well, our neighbors and stuff there. So. They lost, so we lost Penny, our older dog, about three months ago. And then they lost her sister about the three months ago within a day. And so since Georgie's on her own right now, and then she was on her own, we didn't want her, both parents work. And they usually don't get home until like 4.35. And so what we said is, hey, we'll just bring Cleo over and Cleo can hang with Georgie during the day. And then before you guys get home, we'll just drop her off. So it gives, it gives both of them that kind of like that playtime and, and she's not locked up in the house all day and can go outside and go potty and all that kind of stuff. So that's what we did. And they get along really well. They both truthfully kind of hang out a little bit, but they kind of know it, ignore each other. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but they're both very sweet. All right. So then you can, you can actually use an ice cream scoop or you can just use your spoon. So you're going to fill the muffin tins. I always start and do like one spoonful in each one of the tins first or the, the actual muffin part. That way you can get them even. This smells really good. Almost smells like the um, pumpkin spice lattes that are at um, Starbucks right now. That's what it smells like. The ones that have like what, 1500 calories? Oh my gosh, I bet. And hundred and they they say I can't even remember. They said it's almost what did they say? It was like four four to it's four to six tablespoons of sugar. I'm like, oh god. My god. Right, so they just do that, fill that in, and then I just come back, fill in some more. That many calories is what some people just need in a whole day. Well. You know, there's a lot of times and stuff, you'll see people that go to the, like Starbucks and stuff more than once, you know, so they're, you know, they're like, okay, I'm going to get a couple of the, you know, the pumpkin spice lattes and they'll do like, you know, two of them in the day. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, that's more Whoa. calories than you need in the day. And it's all liquids must not, you know, I don't think you get real full from things like that. A little bit left. All right. Off the side. Then we had our walnuts. So we're just going to do a quick chop. And you don't have to do any nuts. You don't have to do walnuts. You can do pecans. You can just skip it. You can actually just do sprinklings of um, your um, rolled oats, you know, whatever you want to put on top. Usually a lot of times and stuff on recipes, you'll start seeing where they're like, oh, go ahead and add butter and add you know your flour and your crumbles and all that. You don't need them. These are so sweet already that you don't need all those things in them and these are already toasted so i just toasted them up the other day 
a little bit on top. You toast your nuts like in a, just like a regular pan. I just go, yep. Usually I will, unless I, unless I'm in a big hurry or something and I'll put them in a pan that's on the, on the stove, but that's with that you have to be careful because you can burn them really easy. So I just usually put them on a baking sheet and put them in the oven 350. And then I just watch and then shake it, shake it probably. And it probably takes about five minutes at 350. So not very much time. All right. So there is what we've got. got a little mess there. So we're going to put these in the oven and you'll see that these actually rise up a little bit. So they'll go in the oven and hopefully they'll be done here in just a few. So get those in. So that's our pumpkin muffins. Easy. Like I said, if you don't want pumpkin, you're not a pumpkin fan, which some people I know aren't, then go ahead and switch out and do like lemon blueberry. You could do peaches. You could do, you know, especially with Palisade peaches going, you could do all those right now. Or you could always do what um, the Asseltons do. They always talk about that instead of making everything sweet, make it savory. So put, you know, do like zucchini muffins and, and, you know, and add like carrots or carrot muffins, almost like a carrot cake. So many different ways that you could add that in there. All right, let's get spaghetti in. We'll get linguine. This is whole wheat. So just whole wheat linguine that we're going to be using. I just want to get that in and get that cooking. All right, nuts will go off to the side. We will start with the Halloween salad so we can have that one ready. So sweet potatoes. This is this one's a actually it's got a lot of ingredients for the salad. Let me pull everything over. That out of the way. And this will be fun. This is going to be our salad bowl. So we're going to make it where it spreads out because I don't get to use it much. I pulled it from the basement. Also to make things fun, Trader Joe's had these little pumpkin pastas. And so I actually made, I actually added some of the pumpkin pastas in here. So we've got little pumpkin pastas. It actually is right here. The only thing is, is when it, it doesn't, it doesn't hold up really well. So you'll notice when it starts cooking that it starts falling apart, but a lot of them you can get, sometimes you can get the whole piece. So if you actually did this, you could actually stuff these and have these as little hors d'oeuvres too, which would be really fun. So I figured this is Halloween. Here's how you add the things to it. All right, so salad. I'm gonna need another bowl. Let me grab that really quick. That is just so cute. I haven't seen those there, but they I love that I love their seasonal things at Trader Joe's. Yeah, they had this with um, so it's butter, it's basically it's butternut squash um pasta that's in like little pumpkins and then they had like butternut squash that were in jars but yeah so butternut squash sauce that they had of course had oil in it but I thought those are cute those are really those are cute for something different all right so purple sweet potatoes so when you make them this is what they're going to look like so I already cooked them up so they're in the stores now so we are now starting to get the Hannah yams so it's kind of funny we've got the sweet potatoes the yams the Hannah yams but they're calling them just I think they're calling them white sweet potatoes and then are white yeah white sweet potatoes and then they got the purple ones so a lot of people I know kind of shy away from the purple ones they're not as sweet as the rest of them but they're actually make things really pretty so all I did is I just put it on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper a little bit of uh, vegetable broth or water doesn't really matter put it in a 400 degree oven and then just let it roast and so I just watched it and it's funny because it Jerry thought I was actually doing beets and he knows I'm not a beet fan at all but these are purple sweet potatoes and they look Halloween-y. Yeah, and they're delicious. They are, they're very much delicious. All right, so we've got, let me just pull this over so I can tell you how much we're putting in. So we've got pasta. So I did the, so we've got the, um, we've got the little kind of the rotini pasta. We've got the little pumpkins cause we added those in cause we thought that's cute. So you've got a mixture of both of those. So get that ready to go. So I'm going to do the dressing really quick. So we'll get that ready first. So the dressing, you've got a half of a large avocado. So I've got an avocado here. Let's get this ready. Just cut that open. And hopefully it's a good one. 
we've had a few avocados here lately in Colorado that are not so good. This one's pretty good on this side, so add this in. So it's gonna be a little bit more of a creamy dressing. Let me put that off to the side. Then we've got two tablespoons of fresh dill. If you don't have fresh dill, dried dill works. I'm just gonna grab some of this off. And I figure since I have dill, that fresh dill, and I have the rosemary, we talked about the rosemary roasted potatoes, dill is gonna be like a potato corn chowder. That's what I'm gonna be using that for. So we don't have anything that goes to waste this, this weekend. How do you keep, All right? what I find about herbs and I love fresh herbs, but I they don't stay fresh very long at my house. No, they don't. The only thing that I found that um, there's two different ways to keep them fresh a little bit longer. In these little boxes and stuff, they'll go bad pretty quick. And so, and, and always when you buy these boxes, you know, turn them over on the backside and make sure that there's nothing that's, you know, getting kind of mushy or anything like that. You'll notice that you're like, oh, wow, this basil looks great. And then when you'll flip it over and stuff, the, the, the leaves are all brown on the bottom. So one thing you can do is you can pull this out and you can wrap it in like these, these type of like, what is it? Cotton, cotton towels. You can wrap them up and then you can put them in their fridge. They do keep longer, usually about a week. Um, the other thing that you can do is put them in, sometimes they'll say like in the, the fresh water or what I've done sometimes too, if I know it's going to be like two or three days, I will just do this in the refrigerator and it covers it up. If it long as light, the light keeps away from it, it seems to keep it longer. So those are a couple of tips to, to use your fresh herbs a little longer. But this is potato corn chowder tomorrow, rosemary roast potatoes, all that. That's how we're going to use all this. All right, so I've got the date. I've got the dill in there. I've got a tablespoon of Dijon mustard. You could use if you don't have Dijon, you could use the um, like a regular just yellow mustard, stone ground mustard, whatever's your favorite. There's so many mustards out there now. Then we've got a tablespoon of date paste. So that's just a sweetener. That's just dates and water that are just uh, blended up, or you can buy it. Then we've got a tablespoon of lemon juice. So a little bit of tartness. Then you've got black pepper. Let's just grab a little bit of black pepper. Fresh ground. And then you've got a half, so basically quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. It's a little bit of garlic. That is it for the dressing. Oh, and then Easy. So let me get this ready. The other part of this is making it even creamier. It's putting together vegan mayo. So since I already had vegan mayo in the fridge and we usually make it with mock tuna salad, I'm not going to make a bunch more because you can see how much I have left over. So vegan mayo, all that is, is silken tofu. This is one of the best kinds. I love this because it's shelf safe and you don't have to worry about taking over your refrigerator space. So Mori New is one of the best um, silken tofus and you can keep it in your shelf for I was like, you know, five, six, seven months. So you just use one of these in the blender. And then I put the recipe down. You've got a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, two teaspoons of lemon juice, and then you blend it up together. And then I always put it in one of these mason jars like this. And then I use the plastic lids that I ordered on Amazon. That way you don't get the, the metal that's oxidizing around the, the edges and making your uh, mayo go bad. So this will usually keep, I would say about two weeks in the fridge. And then you'll notice when it starts to go and starting to get it maybe on the, the side of where you don't want to use it, you'll start seeing a lot of moisture and liquid and stuff that'll start being at the top of it. But this was just made the other day. So we're actually going to use this. So let me add it into the dressing. Just a little bit. And then on the blender we go. Do it on low. You ever have one of those things you like at Jamba Juice, you know, those plastic things that go over it so it like minimizes the noise? Uh-huh. 
I love that. You know, we need those. We, I think we all need those for our homes. Yep. All right. So then I have another, there we go. So the dressing's actually really thick. So it's nice and creamy. So taste wise, because we'll just leave it in the blender for a few minutes. I'll show you it. That's really good. It's like a, it's like an avocado, got a little bit of that. Um, I'll show you kind of the greenery, the green color of it. Very pretty. So it's got a, it's got a little bit of tartness and stuff because your lemon juice, your Dijon mustard, but then it has a little bit of sweetness because you've got the, um, the date paste in there. So if you didn't want any sweetness at all, leave the date paste out, but nice thick. Cause I know a lot of people don't like, like to make sure they have thicker dressings. So you have a nice, very thick dressing ready to go. So we're going to set that off to the side because we'll use that here in a few minutes. All right. So why the salad is Halloween colors. Let me just check this really quick. You've got kind of almost like a, like a purple. Some people would say that kind of looks like beets kind of, you know, could be like, fingers i'm not sure exactly all kinds of different things so you've got color with that you've got the red cabbage i've got you know they've got the little pumpkin pasta everything else in there and then at the very end i'm going to show you why we're calling it the halloween salad so we're going to toss so we've got spinach but use your favorite green spinach is just very easy spinach and if you, you know, this is that, this is probably just the medium spinach. If you want to use the smaller, use the baby spinach, use mixed greens, whatever. If you don't like the big pieces, feel free to chop them up. But this works for just exactly what I'm looking for. So then I'm going to add the pasta. And I don't think I'm going to add it all. Jerry's kind of like, eh, kind of pasta and salad. So I'm just going to add some of it. Whatever I don't use, this could be a mac and cheese too. Could be leftover. So pretty already, you've got the little pumpkins that we were talking about earlier. All right, so this is where you can add a little bit of the dressing and mix it in. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna massage it in. Cause it's a very thick dressing, so it's not one that just pours right on. I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. And don't go too rough because your pasta will break up then, especially if you have these little pumpkin pastas. They flip it over a little bit more. And I have thrown it everywhere. So just a nice mixture. It just covers the leaves. It's just, it's more of just to add it in there. So when you add the, the actual dressing on the top, you don't have it all sitting on the top. So it's a nice way to do it. Pull off the glove. You don't need that anymore. All right. So then the other ingredients you've got. So we're going to add, we're going to add, um, we've got cucumbers, which I'll show you here in a second. You have your purple sweet potatoes. And yes, they, these are cold, but Jerry doesn't think they're sweet. I think they're just as sweet as everything else. So look at the colors already. That's Pretty. beautiful. Well, it, yeah. they're they're not as sweet maybe as like the Hannah, but I think they're just as sweet, if not sweeter than the orange. I would agree. I think they're, they're like the yams and stuff can be when I, what we have here in Colorado, the yams seem to be really the sweetest because they're, they're more of the dark, the darker colors and stuff. And then there goes sweet potatoes. And I would say the Hannah yams and then, you're going to be looking at the purple at the end, but color wise, you can't beat it. I mean, they're beautiful colors. Got that in there. Okay. We've got that. We've got, the, we've got the walnuts. Just add some of the walnuts in same ones that I toasted. And then, so following along, so we got cranberries. Make sure when you get the cranberries, they're, they're not ones that they've added all extra sweeteners or sugars on top. There's no need. If you can't find cranberries, you can also use dried cherries. Those are really good. Oh, you know, you're you're using dried. I'm having trouble finding fresh already. I would think that they would have been out already. 
the fresh cranberry. Yeah, no, I if fresh in the stores and stuff, I have it. They usually don't like here. I would say we wouldn't see them until probably where it gets close to like mid November. So what I what I've been doing for the last like I say four or five years, so especially since COVID, where you can't find it, I've actually just been buying an extra bag and put it in the freezer. That way, if I decide I want to make like a cranberry chutney or something like that during the year. I can just go to the freezer and grab it because otherwise you can't find them. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea because yeah. I, I want to freeze them up. I'm doing a fall class and it's like, oh, I can't get the cranberries. It. I have done that. I've gotten in trouble a couple classes when I was getting ready to do like holidays and, and I get like mid November, maybe the first of November and I couldn't find the cranberries. So that's, that has been a problem. Okay. So we got scallions, a little bit of greenery. Nice. Always the onion. Onion's always a good flavor within that. And then we've got purple cabbage. It's another pretty. Jerry loves when I've cut up purple cabbage, he's usually sticking his hands in it and just eating it. Loves it. All right. And then I think we've got everything in there for that. And then we'll show you why it's a Halloween salad. So now I'm going to add, normally I can add a little bit of dressing in it. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then I will mix it up again. Then we'll plate it. Should have just left the glove on. So it's almost like the dressing is probably as thick as what you would normally see for like a coleslaw dressing. Are you guys having a lot of potlucks lately in your community? There's not a lot of potlucks here in Colorado. I thought maybe because you lived in a, you know, a community like they, they don't do. Um, so our neighbor does, um, they'll actually put together like a get together, but it's more about drinks and hors d'oeuvres. Oh. And I would say that the hors d'oeuvres, I always take the healthy things, you know, I'll make like a, a sweet potato bruschetta or something like that. But a lot of times it's like, sausages sausage links and all kinds of fried foods they'll bring in like fried chicken fingers all those kind of things so i try to do like you know fresh guacamole things that are healthy doesn't say that that's what always gets eaten first unfortunately we're trying salad bowl And then we're gonna go into the pumpkin pasta. I have to check my pasta. Couple more minutes. So before I show you the Halloween part, there's the salad without the Halloween part yet. Wow, that looks beautiful. Anything with purple and green. Those are my two favorite colors. Yes. And then for Halloween, there you go. Take your cucumber and then you cut in little Halloween faces. So if you're trying to get your kids to eat some salads, this is a fun way to do it. So I've got little, little guys and stuff that are gonna go on top of the salad. And you did that by hand. You didn't have like a little press. I just, I did a little paring knife. So you can see they're not, they're not all perfect. So I just did it with a little paring knife and then just kind of, just kind of cut it out. And, and you know, the, the larger the cucumber that you can get, the better. And you want to definitely use like the Asian cucumbers where they have less seeds, because once you cut into it and you get the seeds in the middle, it's harder to get the, the, the better cuts. I'm getting, I'm guessing you probably use a zucchini too, maybe. You sure could. That would actually probably be even easier because the, the cucumber tends to give a little bit. So it's nice to have um, where you don't have that, where it slips as much. Zucchini would actually be a really, really cool thing. And then everybody could take it. And if you had like a, like a little bit extra dressing or a dip on the side, you could actually take it off and dip it into that. And we got, that would be good. All right. So there is get this out of the way so you guys can see things.
It looks like most of them are facing this way. So there's the Halloween salad that you can put in front of your kids, especially if they like cucumbers. And I guarantee you, it will go fast. Yeah, it's the really bowl good. is beautiful. The presentation, that's just such a great little. Thank you. Oh my this God. is one of the bowls I've never hardly used at all. And I was like, oh, I got to find a different bowl other than just a white bowl. So that is our fun salad. Let's put that to the side. I think our pasta is probably going to be ready. So then I can start making that. Oops, as I drop it. Muffins are looking great. All right, let me just rinse the pasta really quick. And then I'm going to show you the pumpkin. Dressing off to the side. And actually, the dressing that we made, I thought I had pasta on the side of my face. Dressing we made, there's probably enough for another salad. So it makes quite a bit of dressing. And that's the nice thing about when you massage the dressing in. When you massage dressing into your salads, you use a lot less dressing. That's another, another tip. All right, let me get the pasta. We were in one class. This reminds me every time I do this. We were in one class and we were making a whole bunch of pasta for, I think we had like 40 people in the class that we were cooking for. It was like a natural grocer's. And I remember Jerry was helping me. Do you remember that, Jerry? He was helping me one time and then um, reached over into the sink and was doing the, the pasta here just like this. And pretty much 90% of it went down the drain. Oh my gosh. So we yeah. had to quickly, we had to quickly oh. go and, and uh, make some pasta really quick, but we had the sauce ready and things like that, but it all worked out. You don't have one of those little drain covers so that stuff doesn't sneak out? It was at, it was at natural grocers. They did. Oh, I see. Yeah. So it went, it just was like, it, everything just slid right in there. So we had to go to the store. We had to go back into the store really quick, buy a bunch of pasta, make up some pasta, talk for a little bit, but everybody understood. They all kind of were like, so every time we would go into a, a get ready to do a class or something, they'd be like, don't let Jerry do the pasta. That's funny. That's gotta be heartbreaking. Yeah, it was, it was like, yeah. Cause it was, it's definitely one of those ones that give you so much money to do the classes, but you know, so it's, it was, but it worked out. Everybody was, everybody was happy. So the pumpkin pasta, so pumpkin pasta. So what I did is just like what I was showing you back here, this is, this was a large pumpkin. We could only find the larger pumpkin. So I only used part of it, but you know, if you think about it, like let it dry out like that. How cool without putting the pumpkin face on it, it looks a little eerie. So I just kind of left it to the side. I'll actually bake up the rest of it and use the rest, but I only needed part of it for today. But I thought it's kind of cool looking. But if you leave it, if you don't, if you leave it in your house and try to let it dry out, you're going to get those fruit flies and stuff. So definitely would be something you want to do outside. How I'm big, I, I, you know, I don't know if I've ever cooked a pumpkin, but kabocha squash is something I just cook it in an instant pot. I always seem to get one that is perfect size for the eight quart. And that's yep. how I've been cooking my squashes. Squash, that would be a great way to do it. Yeah, because you could, you know, the same thing like you're doing here, you know, because it has the, I have the pumpkin. So I just use like some vegetable broth and I use some water. And then I put the rosemary. So I had fresh rosemary and fresh thyme that I just spread on there. I mean, it's very pretty presentation. I also did, um, so it's a whole, it's a whole um, head of garlic and stuff. And I just chopped off the top and then put it on the same pan to roast it out because I'm going to use roasted garlic. So you'll have roasted garlic, roasted pumpkin. So that's what we're going to be using today. Which nice. is really nice. And but I, that's how do that's you roast your garlic? How do you roast your garlic? Because I do it in the air fryer because I'm basically lazy. How do you roast the the what? Your garlic. garlic. Yeah. Garlic. I just I do it just like this. So I just put, you know, I'll just put it like right on the so I won't so I won't cut the top off when I'm doing it. I just take these actual well, the heads of garlic and I'll just put them on the the rack and stuff in your oven 350 and I'll just let it sit there and roast for probably it depends on your, you know, gas or electric. It's probably about 45 minutes. And then I just pull them out and let them cool. And then I just start. And then I just pull the roasted garlic out just like that. Nice. That's how I do it. But air fryers would work. That's a lot easier. Or you go buy the cloves like this already and then, then roast them up. That's even an easier way. So we got the garlic. So once you do it and it cooks enough, just like this, and it had some of the moisture because it was on the pan with the, with the water and the vegetable broth the peeling comes off really wow. fast. That's the one we're babysitting. 
she's talkative. So just peel them down because you're going to use the garlic. If you have extra garlic left over, freeze it. There's nothing better than having roasted garlic in your freezer. So just put it in a, in a baggie. And then when you get ready to do like a tomato sauce and you want to do like a marinara one night and then maybe a smoky um, pepper type of smoked pepper or something, then you can use your roasted garlic the next night. So I just keep, I will go, usually what I'll do is I'll go to the store. I'll buy like 12 heads of garlic because they're like two for a dollar or something like that. I'll buy 12 of them and I'll roast it out on a Sunday. And then when I'm watching football or whatever else is on Sunday, then I'll just take it like this and peel them down. And then what I'll do is I'll put them in bunches of like four to five. So I'll just take, I'll put it on a, a baking sheet and I'll put like four or five of them like that together. And then they'll freeze like in little, little, I guess, little bundles. And then you can just pull them out of the baggie when you're ready to use them. An easy way to do it. But roasted garlic adds just different flavors to everything. It's just really nice to have around. Just peel them down. You can see it goes really quick once you roast them up. Peel the skin off, the paper stuff. That's pretty good. And then you get sticky fingers. All right. So in the blender, you've got, so the blender, which is where we're going to make the sauce. Um, just make sure my noodles are folding up good. Let me check. Muffins are looking great. We'll actually be able to show them, which is wonderful. All right. So in the blender, so I've already done, so I've done the garlic, I've done the, the pumpkin. So I'm going to use I'm actually on this recipe going to use a little bit of the, the, the roasted pumpkin that I've got. And then I'm going to use just a little bit because I have a little bit of the canned pumpkin left over. And so I'm going to mix the two of them. So my, my sauce will be a little bit darker than like kind of the nice yellow orangey color and stuff that we have here. All right. So got the pastas done too. So we're going to do in a large skillet, we're going to add, we're going to get the mushrooms ready. So let's do this a little bit. Uh, we're just going to use water instead of vegetable broth. Cause it's just easier. I have, they were there, my mushrooms. I was like, I have so many trays going. So regular, these are just, um, these are port like the baby portobellas, but you could use the white, you could use the cremini, you could use whatever mushroom you want. If you don't like mushrooms, you know, completely leave them out. You could also substitute in, um, like if you wanted like eggplant. So it kind of gives you a little bit of that, that, kind of chewiness mouthfeel, you could do that in there. If you don't like eggplant, you don't like mushrooms, which some people don't, then don't do either one. So just get your mushrooms in. Don't add a lot of moisture to your mushrooms because your mushrooms usually will put out quite a bit of moisture and you don't want to have too much of the moisture there. So always just kind of put a little bit of moisture and then as you're sauteing them up, if you need a little bit more moisture, add it in. So at least then you're not draining it. So once this gets going, We'll let that go. Then we're going to add the spinach. So the spinach, you could actually, if you wanted to in this recipe, you could just leave it fresh like that and have, you know, big, big pieces of spinach, but we're actually going to wilt it down just a little bit. So we're just going to let those go. And then we're going to get the pumpkin sauce done. Okay. So now we've got the roasted pumpkin. So I just peeled off. So if your piece of pumpkin like this, I just peeled off the, the outside of it and use the inside. And the nice thing about this pumpkin that I've roasted, it has the flavors of the rosemary and the thyme that's already in, in it. Because you can see when I was doing that, I just put the rosemary and the thyme around it. So it's picked up all those different flavors. But then we're, what we're going to do, though, is we're going to taste it after we're making it. And if we need to add a little bit more rosemary and thyme, I have a little bit more fresh to go with that. So you need one and a half pounds. So one and a half pounds, you're probably about two cups give or take up the pumpkin. And it really depends too about how much sauce you want. We are on, on this side. So Jerry and I and stuff, we like things that are really saucy. So if you only like the noodles that are just barely covered with the sauce, then you probably want to stay with the recipe. But if you want it really saucy, add a little bit more pumpkin. It's not going to hurt. Because you're a saucy gal. I like saucy. I like noodles. Um, you know, I like and stuff, but it makes it so much better when you've got when you've got the, the really good sauce on it. So that's the way I always look at it. Let's get another spoon. Make sure my mushrooms are doing good. They don't take very long for your mushrooms to cook. And I made the slices really big. 
And the reason why I make the slices really big is I don't like mushrooms. I will eat them if they're in like a meatloaf or something like that where they're ground up and I don't know the mushrooms or I may know they're there, but I don't, it's not like the mouth chew and the flavor, but Jerry loves them. So we always get things with mushrooms and then he just gets them off. So I don't good. like mushrooms either. I'll eat them, but I don't really like them. Yeah. I just, to me, they taste like dirt. I just like don't like the texture, cheese. you know? Yeah. You know, I always, people at, at work used to make fun of me because they're always like, you know, you're, you're, you're plant-based, you know, who, whole food plant-based, you should like everything. And I'm like, well, nobody likes everything. It's like, I don't like mushrooms. I don't like beets. Anything that's, I think more of like, like I said, they just taste like dirt to me. The don't earthy, you don't like earthy things. Yeah. It's gotta be, I mean, everybody has things they don't like. So, But you, but you do like uh, eggplant though, right? Yes, I do. It's, it's been, I would say when I was younger, not so much, but it's now been more acquired, but now we'll do like, you know, we'll do some eggplant salads and eggplant dishes and stuff. And I have no problem with it, but just, you've got to make sure you prepare it right. Because otherwise when you prepare it, it can be very mushy. And I think people are like eggplant is more the mouth feel. So when they get something and it mushes in their mouth, they don't like that. It's almost like the same thing with mushrooms. Yeah, it's probably why I don't like oatmeal. I don't like mushy food. Yeah. Filled donuts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that was from a kid when somebody ate a filled donut one time and they ate it and it started dripping down. And I was just like, Bleh. so never filled donuts. All right. So I'm going to put the spinach in. So your mushrooms look really good. Don't want them you know, too soft so they don't have much moisture. So now I'm going to add the spinach so it can wilt down. That's going. That was like five ounces of spinach. And I keep the spinach is going everywhere. Okay, so we've got we've got the one and a half pounds of the pumpkin. I'm gonna get, let's see, two tablespoons. Let me just get a little bit of vegetable broth. I forgot to grab that. If you don't have vegetable broth, water works just fine. I've got garlic. I'm gonna add in the garlic. It's that, and we got a high speed blender, so we don't have to worry about it uh, being chunky with that. I'm going to taste, I'm going to put this in here first and I'm going to taste it. If we need to add more thyme and rosemary, we'll add it. I'll just do a little bit of black pepper, but I don't want to overpower it and have too much of that rosemary and thyme. Because thyme sometimes, thyme, thyme, thyme sometimes can actually take over. So can rosemary. All right, make sure I've got everything in there. Yep. All right, we've got everything. I'm gonna actually grab my vegetable broth because we're gonna drill, we're gonna actually start adding it. Okay, this will go off. I'll show you really quick. So there's the wilting of the of the spinach, which all kind of clumps together, and your mushrooms, and those are all ready to go. Nice. that off Is that anymore okay now we'll start it on low this is our pumpkin sauce we're going to add in a cup of vegetable broth How come you keep your blender back there and don't put it closer? Guess you can't hear me. Kelly. Kelly, can you hear me? We've lost contact. We've lost sound. Are you guys going to try these recipes? I think she's a great chef. I've actually tasted her food. She Kelly, I was suggesting moving your blender so you don't have to walk back. That's true. But we're done now. <laughs> I left it over there because it was just easier to do that. But yeah, I agree. Let me check the muffins really quick. Mm. 
There's the pumpkin muffins. I'm gonna do them just a couple minutes more just to make sure the insides are not mushy. We made a few of them the other day. And you'll see that I actually on the top, this was for the neighbors decorated it. So it has, it has the walnuts, but it has, uh, you see all the oats on there. So it just added a little bit more to it. Looks nice. Yeah. I bet those freeze great. They do freeze really great. And like I said, you can make the banana nuts. You can do all those different ones. They're just really good. Okay. So we got the spaghetti. So I'm going to get another bowl so I can mix it up. Just enough out of all the extra bowls. Let's taste the sauce. See if I need to add anything else. Actually has, it's got, a, it's, it's, it's not really strong, but you can taste, you can, you can have the, um, um, the rose, uh, rosemary and thyme. So it has just a little bit. So it's actually probably on the side that I prefer, but if you like it more, like you want more rosemary and thyme, just add a little bit more. And I know I plugged this in. So let me, I'm going to have to heat up the sauce really quick. You know, you could definitely put it in the, keep it in the blender and heat it up. The other thing I forgot to add in, nutmeg. Oh yeah. Nutmeg and pumpkin is really good. Do a little stir. It's a nice garlic flavor too. Nice roasted garlic. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna have the pumpkin. So if you're following along and stuff, we're actually on step eight, the last step. Isn't that a beautiful sauce? Do you normally, when you teach your cooking classes, have people cook along with you? Or are they demonstration or are they hands-on? So the, the ones and stuff, we have Zoom classes and we've actually had some people lately that have asked to, um, let me just grab a spatula. They've asked to follow along. And so they're cooking along with us. So you can see them on camera. So they're, they're following along on recipes that we're making. When we do classes that are here at um, where we live, we're actually have demo classes because some people prefer them. It's interesting because I only did a couple of demo classes and then I did, was doing a lot more hands-on. So they actually, you know, when you come in, you're, you know, you're making the soups and you're making the, the salads and whatever else and stuff that we're doing. But I had a couple of people say, oh, I thought this was a demo class. And now I, now I realized and stuff that, and I, and I just wanted to try the food. I didn't want to have to make it. Yeah. So I do a mixture of both. That's funny. Yeah. It's like, well, why wouldn't you? But they're like, nope, I don't want to cook. I just want to try the recipes. And I just had my neighbor ask um, also if, if, um, cause she's gone pretty much, I would say other than a little bit of fish has gone vegan, whole food plant-based. And she is asking now, she's like, would you make me some, you know, she calls them the vegan options. Cause the other day I made a lasagna spaghetti squash and gave her half of it. And she took it to a party that she was, going to our dinner with her son and everybody and everybody wanted to try it. And she's like, I ate half of it and ate half of it for lunch. And so now she's asking for some food options that she could have during the week. So we'll see how that goes. Cool. All right, grab a little bit of black pepper. It's warming up. You notice you have Havanese and I have half Havanese. We call her a Hava noodle because she's a Havanese poodle. Do you ever <laughs> almost trip over them? Because they always want, they're like Velcro yes. dogs. And that's what I love about her. She always wants to be near me, but sometimes- the Velcro kids. But she's like stealth and she sneaks up on me. And like, sometimes I don't know that she's right under, <laughs> under my feet. Yep. I say Georgie is, is glued to my hip. She's like the Velcro kid. Um, and I have to watch because she will be sitting right here. But then when we watch um, Cleo, the next door neighbor, which is the, Mal the, the Maltese, she is, she was right here because she's thinking that it's lunchtime. And so she, when we first, when we first started babysitting her, she was like a little timid and she would like walk, if you'd walk up to her and stuff, she would turn her back to you and not look at you. Like she pretended you weren't there, but now that she's been over at our house and, and staying now, she's, when we bring her back over during the day, she's like barks the whole way. Bah, 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 bah. She's very social now, which is actually really good. So I think that really helped is adding some social and stuff to her life, which was really good. Her parents are great people. She just needed a little bit more social. 
because her sister before was the one that got all the attention because she was very social. All right, so pasta, still warm. Paste the sauce. That needs a little heat. I'm gonna pull out the muffins. Let them cool just a few minutes. So you're gonna buy the new muffin tins again? You know, I did buy, uh, did I buy a second one? I can't remember. Yes, I think I did because I like to have two. So if I'm doing a class, you know, I got yeah. one that's in there and then one that shows. I think I did replace it. I'm pretty sure I did. But those are phenomenal and they're easy, so easy to clean the silicone bakeware. I think everybody was surprised on how easy they were to, because everybody was like, oh, I don't know if these are going to pop out, the muffins and all that. And you that they did it. And I think probably after the class in, in Mexico, everybody went home and bought one. Yep. Or at least two. Yeah, they're great. They're only like, they're like 15 bucks, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. So the sauce is all ready, nice and heated, ready to go. So I'm going to add it to the spaghetti, the linguine. So Kelly, you're coming because you're the fourth Sunday of the month, you'll be on after Thanksgiving. So you won't be able to make Thanksgiving dinner for us. But I was thinking um, what could be fun for people is showing how to repurpose leftovers. And I'm curious if you know yet what you're making for Thanksgiving dinner. So we're for Thanksgiving dinner because we're, we're usually I'm the one that makes like everything, all the different sides and all the different, you know, the pies and everything else. So we definitely for Thanksgiving because it's and Jerry's very traditional. So he likes, you know, he likes the the different things. And it's it's like when we used to do a lot, like a lot of face-to-face -face classes, we'd almost have like five to six Thanksgivings during the month of November. And so by the time it was, by the time of the end of the month or when it was hitting Thanksgiving, I was like, I'm done. Not Jerry. Loved it. So we'll definitely make um, melting sweet potatoes because we have, we always have to have sweet potatoes. We'll make, um, we'll make some type of flavor, probably maybe like chive mashed potatoes. We always do a... We do it, we got two different stuffings. We have one that's just the very traditional stuffing that like my mom's always made, but the other one stuff has fruit and nuts in it and it's really good. So I'll probably make that one because that's usually a favorite. I always make a huge salad just because, you know, everybody loves salads and it's always good and stuff before the dinner. And then a lot of times I'll make like a, like some type of like a vegetable casserole. It might be something where I do like butternut squash and um, cranberries and Brussels sprouts and I'll roast those up. That's always a fun one. Or sometimes like a wild rice type of a casserole. And then let's see. So that's that. And then of course, dessert, we always make like a, I have a, a melting pumpkin cake or I'll make pumpkin muffins, depending on what Jerry's looking for or a pumpkin mousse. And then I always have to make the, the, the traditional deep dish pumpkin pies that I've always made. But of course it has the eggs and everything else in it for the rest of the family, but they're usually about that thick. And I usually, and then to get, as, as, as the uh, uh, daughter-in-law always says, to gain entry into the house, I have to bring at least three pies so, so yeah, that they can you, enjoy you're not, you're I know you're not as big on desserts. Now, what is this, a melting pumpkin cake, did you say? Yeah, it's actually, it's a, it's one, it's one, um, like one baking dish, like nine by 13. And it's, but it's got, you know, it's got some different sugar. I'm going to try to switch it up a little, little bit this year, but it has, it has like a little bit of the brown sugar, but I was going to use the date paste but it's layers. So it's a dry layer. It's a wet layer. And then like the pumpkin stuff, and then you pour hot water on top of it. And then you usually have like pecans or something like that in it. And you put it in the oven and the, basically the, the cake part of it rises up and then the wet part with uh, the sugar, a little bit on the bottom and it's something you can't eat a lot of goes on the bottom with the, the nuts and you have, it's almost like a caramel, like a pumpkin caramel. But it's all it's all vegan. It just has a little more sugar than I than I would say ninety nine percent of the time that we ever use. So I'm going to try to desugarize it more this year. I do the same thing like with a like a, it makes like a chocolate molten cake. So when you it's around Valentine's Day and if you were doing a class, same thing. It actually makes like a fudge on the bottom of a chocolate cake, and then you put strawberries and all that kind of fun stuff on it. Wow, that's really good. Pumpkin mousse is really good too, though, because you could do it. You know, almost like a you know you do a caramelized top. 
um, type of a thing with a little bit of monk fruit sugar, sugar, and that's really good too. And everybody gets their own, which everybody likes too. You used to make pecan pies, make all those kind of things, but not as much anymore. They do that, but I still bake a lot. All right. Let me clean this up a little bit. All right, then we have scallions. When I'm doing, when I do shows and things, I always like to use scallions just because they're, I mean, they're great, but they're all so pretty. So it adds that, that nice, pretty to it. And then I've got fresh basil. And look at the basil right now. I mean, the leaves on this are beautiful. So basil, grab your largest leaf, tuck your other leaves inside of it, roll it like you're going to roll a cigar. That, grab your knife. And then do small little cuts. Watch your fingers all the way down. And then you get these nice little ribbons like that. If you don't want them that big, then feel free to just cut them in half. But that's called chiffonade. I just, I just, buy those I just have those stuff. special scissors that do it for me, you know? Uh -huh. Scissors are really good with that kind of thing. I've got, I've got some scissors too. I just usually always have the knife and stuff. So I'm grab it like that but yes scissors are a lot safer all right it's all the fresh herbs which means we're going to be making up some stuff for the for the week so let me grab everything because we've got to show everything let me grab my for the muffins They're all coming out nice. They must know that it's a, a cooking class because sometimes things will stick if you don't have the silicone. And I wish I had, don't have any greenery. That's okay. All right, let me grab the salad. Okay, so here we go. Here is... So this is our Halloween salad. It's got your little Halloween, kind of the little pumpkin faces that's on the salad. You also have the, the roasted sweet potatoes and red cabbage. That's why you see all the beautiful colors. Guarantee your kids will love this. You could always have a little bit of dressing on the side too. So if you've got you know kids at home or people that like to dip things, they could take the cucumber and dip it inside the, the extra dressing that you have. These are pumpkin muffins, all ready to go and pumpkin pasta wow. all yummy and ready to go so i think that's lunch because we are at lunch time right now so i think that's going to be our lunch for today and then probably for the next couple that is unbelievable kelly oh i think you froze or maybe i froze Ha ha ha. Kelly, all of that. Kelly, I'm so sorry. I froze for a little bit, but you stayed on. You were showing all three of your beautiful dishes and I was saying how extraordinary they were. And I also asked, do you remember where you got that unique salad plate? I actually, this salad plate here, I got at Salvation Army. So one of the things that if you want, you know, the Salvation Army or Goodwills, um, when I was doing a lot, of, a lot of the cooking classes, I always wanted to have some pretty plates when they plated things up. And this is one that I got at Salvation Army. I think it was like $5. I was trying to see if there's a name on it and there's not. So that, that's where I end up getting a lot of these like unique pieces because you can get them for very cheap. That is so cool. Well, you are unique. Your food, it, I just... <laughs> I just don't know why you guys can't have restaurants, you know, people like you and Lisa, whose food just looks so extraordinary, you know, but that's probably, you probably don't want a restaurant, right? I don't, that like a day-to-day -day restaurant would be really tough because it's a lot of work and it's a lot of hours. But, you know, if you think about it, like if you had a restaurant and then this was brought out on your table and then you had, you know, like you brought like, um, which Chef Antonio was a friend of ours. 
and you could take like your pasta and you could put it into like a great big skillet and it's almost like family style that comes out on the table. That would be a lot of fun. These are these are things that people would love. But it would have to be a different type of a restaurant, just a day-to-day -day restaurant and having, you know, like lunch, dinner type of thing like that. It's a lot of work. I've seen a lot of chefs and stuff not do well after being in restaurants. For I was a pastry chef, which I think in a lot of ways is easier because you don't have that pressure of having to give it to them right then. And it's a, it's a lot of standing and it's a lot of hours. It so. is. You see a lot of chefs and stuff that, um, you know, that are in restaurants and stuff that, you know, they're going out at night. So they tend to imbibe and things that are not necessarily healthy for them. Or they just come home and have a bowl of cereal. I hear that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've done that before. Jerry does that. He does that too. So. That is so funny. Well, Kelly, this was wonderful. Enjoy your lunch. Jerry, as Thank we you. say, is the luckiest man in the world. Yes. Yes, I yeah. am. I know. He's great. Well, he should come on sometime. We should just do a, what they call a mukbang and just watch Jerry eat all your delicious yeah, That's food. true. We could definitely do He would do that. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He's, he's a good eater. Yeah. Yes, he is. He's a um, good eater and doesn't gain any weight. That's, you know, it's that know. man it's thing. So <laughs> annoying. So annoying. Well, happy Halloween and I, I can't you. wait to see you. And actually happy holidays because I won't see you again until after Thanksgiving. And I can't wait to see what you come up with. It sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for Dr. Brooke Goldner. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.